All right, so here we are now with the word. And uh, we want to take this opportunity to sh just share a word with you. Um, and uh, it, it's amazing how the Lord goes about preparing a word for you. Um, let me tell you that in, in my process, in uh, you know, looking at what to share with you today, I was more at the beginning of Hebrews chapter 6, the, the, the first half of the book, um, I mean the chapter, you know, from, from verse 1 to 12. Um, I, I, I was more in that section, in, indeed from, from verse 1 to 8, is really where I was. And, and, and that section was talking about us um, maturing in the Word, going on to, to higher heights. Um, to, to, to higher levels, uh, expanding our knowledge and, and, and depth of understanding in the Word of God and, and, and that sort of thing. I, 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 won't, I won't give you uh, a half-baked sermon about that, um, but that's where I was. And, and then the Lord kept directing me to the second half of the chapter, which is what we read for our scripture reading uh, today, uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13 to 20. And so that's where we are today. And as the Lord directed me to the second half of the chapter, and I started uh, looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 6, 13 to 20, then I start to recognize so much similarities between what I was being given for today and what we shared last week. If you remember last week, we were in Psalm 13 and uh, we were talking about in times like these uh, we need a Savior right uh, in times like these we, we need to recognize that our cries um, to the Lord where we cry out how long Lord uh, how long the Lord is not caught by surprise by anything and uh, he, he's not you know being hurried by anything uh, he's not um, you know, late uh, or anything. He, he is right on time. He's dealing with all the situation in the world, in fact, in the universe, and he's dealing with the specificities of your life and my life. And he is trying to get us prepared to live with him throughout eternity. And so he is shaping our lives through all that we're going through and preparing us to be in the temple with him. And so last week's message, um, I, I'm just kind of taken aback at how similar it is, especially when we get towards the end, um, to today's message. Um, and so today's message is taken basically out of uh, verse 19. Um, and in this book, the Seventh-day Adventist, uh, hymnal, hymn number 214, the title of hymn number 214 is, We Have This Hope. We have this hope that burns within our hearts, hope in the coming of the Lord. We have this faith that Christ alone imparts, faith in the promise of his word. We believe the time is here when the nations far and near shall awake and shout and sing, Hallelujah, Christ is King. And that's where we are today. We have this hope. Lord, teach us as we reflect on this passage. May your spirit have his way. May the convictions that you desire to bring to our hearts uh, be there. May we May we be aware of what you are uh, committed to accomplishing in us and through us. So have your way, Lord. Teach and bless and guide and fulfill your purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have this hope. Today we start out in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 13. We start out with... Uh, the allusion uh, to our brother Abraham. 
And, and, and in the passage, it says, For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. What was going on here? Uh, why is God making a promise to Abraham? And why is he swearing by himself? I mean, is it that deep? Is it, is it that important that God has to swear by himself to brother Abraham? I mean, couldn't Abraham just, just believe what God says? Hmm? Why is it? I mean, who are we anyway as human beings that we require God himself to confirm his word to us? I, I, I mean, if God is God, which he is, if God created us, um, placed us here, then anything he says ought to be enough for us. But it has not been that way ever, not from the very beginning, even with brother Adam. God gave Adam an Eve a word. He says, don't eat from that tree. But was that enough for them? No. They went off and listened to the deceptions of this serpent and chose to go against the word of God. And I'm telling you, according to my understanding of this book, from that, you know, first book of Genesis all the way through to Revelation, you and I have been the very same way. It's like we want to challenge the word of God. We, we, we don't necessarily want to take it at face value. And God had to confirm his word with Abraham uh, and, and says, I'm God, I'm speaking, I'm promising, I am saying to you, Abraham, you will have a son and you will be a blessing to all nations and all nations will come uh, uh, to me through you and through the son that I provided through you. Now, of course, the son that God was talking about was not just Isaac. God was talking about his son. Uh, well, I mean, Isaac is God's son, right? Isaac is God's son as well. But he was talking about the son, you know, the, the unique son of God, which is Jesus Christ. God was promising that Jesus would come to us, to the human family, through Abraham, and that he would be a blessing to the whole world, indeed to the whole universe. But what I'm pointing to right now is that God had to make this promise through uh, a confirmation to Abraham, and Abraham accepted the promise and patiently waited for the fulfillment. Now, that's always something that God is about. He's always testing to see whether or not we will accept his word at face value, accept his word for what it is. God says, don't eat of the tree. Don't eat of the tree. God says, I'm going to send my son through you and I, the promise will be fulfilled through you. And Abraham had to sit and wait. And Abraham was sitting and waiting and nothing was happening. And Sarah, his wife, was wondering too. She says, uh, this doesn't seem like it's going to work out. God is not doing anything. And so Sarah cooked up the scheme, and Abraham was all for it. And, and so we have the story of Hagar and Ishmael. You know that story. The point is, Abraham, even though it says here that he waited patiently for the promise, the truth is that he and Sarah slipped up. They messed up, just like Adam and Eve messed up, just like you and I mess up. We don't take the promise and recognize that the promise means that we are to depend on God and trust in the Word of God, even to death, even when there is no other way out. God says, his word will stand. And what we have is an opportunity to manifest trust in God through the word that he has given. 
when we are manifesting faith and trust in God through the word he has given, then what we are exercising is hope. That's, that's what this passage um, uh, defines for us. What is hope? Hope is trust in the word of God. What he has said, no matter whether we have any evidence for it or not. The book says that Abraham, verse 15, said that he patiently endured until he obtained the promise. So what about you? What about me? God has given his word to you and to me. And according to the passage, God has sworn by himself. He, 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 has, swore, he has given an oath and he says, on the other hand, I cannot lie. I'm unchangeable. I'm immutable. I, I am who I am. You can trust in that. So what's God's word to you? To us in general, God says, Jesus says, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. What is God's word to us? God says he will give us eternal life. We will live with him forever. Now as a precursor to that, he says, I want you to begin living as if you are living in the eternal life with me from right now. And when we study the word, we go back to the book of Isaiah. Um, Isaiah says that uh, we shall not hurt on all of God's holy hill. In other words, we're not going to be slaying and killing. There's no going to be shedding of blood. Not, uh, not only no shedding of blood, human blood, but there's not going to be any shedding of blood of uh, even animal blood anymore. Um, Jesus has come. He's the Lamb of God. He has died and he has shed his blood so that we can be forgiven and saved in heaven. And so there's no need for the shedding of any animal blood for sacrifices, for religious purposes. But not only is there no shedding of blood for religious purposes, there's no shedding of blood even for, you know, for the belly, even for eating purposes, right? So if we're practicing to live with God in the eternity that he has for us, where there's no shedding of blood, then I suppose that what we should do is not shed any blood now in order to satisfy our needs, right? You all understand what I'm saying. I don't have to, I don't have to make it any more detailed than that. Uh, eat what God has prepared for us for eternity. Fruits and nuts, and even right now, you can do vegetables as well before we get to the kingdom. But what else has God said for you and for me? Let's go to a different area of life. In the social realm, this morning in Sabbath school, <clears throat> we, uh, we studied um, rest and relationship and healing. <clears throat> and that lesson about rest and relationship and healing is talking about forgiveness. That's what it was about. What's the word of God to us? What is the hope that we have? Uh, the hope that we have is that in eternity, all of our relationships will be smooth, will be working. There will be no need for forgiveness. We're not going to do anything that hurts one another, that puts one another down. Um, uh, so if that's the future, if that's what's our hope uh, uh, in eternity with God, then why not start practicing today? Why not live a life of zero negativity between us, where we don't say or do anything that would injure another person, that would cause another person to feel uh, uh, put down, to feel excluded, uh, to feel less than, um, uh, to, feel, to, to feel like you have some superiority complex over them and that they are inferior. Why not have every word come out of our mouth, according to Ephesians 4, 29, every word come out of our mouth that would build one another up and bless one another. Hmm? That's God's word to us. 
Why not live that way from now so that we live into a blessed hope um, as, as God brings us into eternity? Well, what is God's word to us, his unchangeable, immutable word to us? Let, let's go to a, a, another area of life. God says, if you confess your sins, he says, I will be faithful to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now, the first part of Hebrews chapter 6 is dealing with sin, dealing with repentance to sin and so forth. And, and Paul says, we understand the in initial general principles of God's kingdom. They're simple. They're straightforward. They're clear. L let us live those principles of God's kingdom and stop going back into that stuff all over and over again, disputing this and disputing that, um, uh, sinning against one another and so forth. He says when we're living like that, we are putting God to shame. We're, we're, we're crucifying Jesus all over again. Uh, let us step it up and go beyond that. And go beyond sin. What? Go beyond sin. Yeah, that's what he's talking about in uh, 1 John. He's saying that uh, it's possible. Now, now, this is challenging. But it's possible for us as human beings to take God's word, the principles of God's word, and the spirit of God and bind them together in our life in such a way that we are always in harmony with God's will. Obeying not just like the written, you know, commandments, the Ten Commandments and so forth. Paul here is saying in uh, Hebrews chapter 6, the beginning part, he said let's go beyond just the, you know, expressed written law and, and, and let us move up higher. Let, let us get into the realm of the spirit where we are, we are obeying all that God has in terms of the written word, but we're also um, uh, communing with the spirit in such a way that as the spirit gently nudges us one way or the other, then we are just, you know, compliant. We just freely move with the spirit as he guides us through life and, and, and we, everything about us is given by the Spirit. That's God's word for us. Uh, that's how we're going to be living in eternity. That's our future hope. Let's start living like that now. The truth of God's word is that Jesus came and he lived like that in total, absolute compliance with every word and every wish and every desire of God because he was always led by the Spirit. And there's nothing that Jesus did that we cannot do as we give ourselves completely to him. So as we surrender completely to Jesus, we will move into this hope that we have, which is to dwell with God through eternity. And God will manifest himself in and through us, and we will be living on this planet now, in this dark world, now, as it is now, with sin and devastation and degradation all around us, we will be living as Jesus lived, because it will actually be Jesus living in and through us. That's our hope. And we can have it now. We have this hope that burns within our hearts. It is the life of Jesus Christ. And it goes on here. Now, now we get to the part where it's so similar to the ending of last week's sermon. Verse 19, it says, This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil. That's the New King James Version. Um, what it's saying is that Jesus is our forerunner. He's gone before us. And as he has gone into the innermost sanctum, into the inner temple with his Father, 
We have gone in there with him because we are in him. Now, it, that, that's something to shout about. That's something to say hallelujah about. That we enter the presence of God in and through Christ with him. And as such, we have now become one with God. We have, we, the, our, our hope, so see right now as I'm standing here with you, uh, it's, it's a hope. It's a hope. It's a hope for the manifestation of what is not yet. It is, spiritually, we are with Christ in the most holy place now. If you can get a sense of that, that we are with Christ in the most holy place now, it can transform how we live our life here in the immediate, if you get what I'm saying. And there will come a day when that which is already in the spiritual will become manifest in the physical. We will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Let us encourage one another with this word that is our hope. Jesus has gone before us and he has opened the pathway and we have gone in with him. As the forerunner, he is the king of righteousness. That's verse 20. That's the last word of the passage. Jesus is the king of righteousness. And I'm saying to us today, my brothers and sisters, if we do have this hope that burns within our hearts, then we ought to be manifesting the righteousness of Jesus Christ now in this place, in this world. God has provided for us to be the manifestation of, and I, I know this is, listen to this, God has provided for us. Now I'm praying, Spirit, Lord, by your Spirit, may, may this word, uh, may this word sink in, may, 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 be, may it be a dart that comes in because it's, it's a challenging word. It's a wonderful word. We accept the word as the Spirit gives it to us, but it's a, it's a difficult word for us to, to hear uh, in our humanness. So Lord, in the Spirit, may your children hear this word in the Spirit. What I was saying is God has determined he has created a pathway for us, you and I, to manifest God in the world. That, that, that's, let, let that, don't, don't, don't resist it. Don't, don't de try to deflect it. Let it, let it come in. Uh, re receive it. God, through Jesus Christ, through the Word, through the Spirit, He has determined that we should manifest God in the world by allowing this hope to reside in us, allowing His Spirit to reside in us and through us so that as we go into the world, as we go about our duties in the world, men and women, boys and girls, it's not that they will, you know, just see you coming. They will see God coming in and through you. That's daunting. I, I, I know we hesitate to, to accept that, but it's challenging. But you and I are sons and daughters of God. You accept that, right? God wants to manifest himself in and through his children to the world, to the universe, literally that we are the light of Jesus Christ shining in the world now and literally shining in the universe throughout eternity. That is our hope. 
this is our hope. Do you accept it? Can you accept that? Can you believe that? We have this hope that burns within our hearts. Hope in the coming of the Lord. Hope that the Lord will be actually manifesting himself in and through us now before his coming. Because, you know, many of us are looking, we're saying, you know, we're hoping for Jesus to come. And we're looking to the east and we're looking to the clouds and so forth. But do you realize that there are men and women, boys and girls, who need Jesus to come right now, today? Today. They need Jesus to come into their lives today. And Jesus wants to come into their life today. But you know how he wants to come into their life today? Through you and through me. Are you willing to go? Are you willing to be used of Jesus, to be led by Jesus? to be the difference maker in somebody's life today? Are you willing to be the Jesus in somebody's life today? God is calling, he's reaching out to us and he's saying, I have this hope, I want you to receive it and share it with your brothers and sisters. That's all I want you to do. Receive the hope that I have for you and share it with your brothers and sisters. If you're willing to go, all you have to do is say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, send me. Raise your hand if you are a yes, Lord. Lord, here we are. You are our hope. You are our only hope. And you offer it yourself to us that we might be your hope in the world. That men and women, boys and girls, brothers and sisters who are yearning for something different, something better. Uh, they're yearning for light in darkness. They're yearning for love in a loveless wilderness. They're yearning for us, Lord, to come and to bring you to them. Let us be your disciples. Let us be filled with your spirit and go out to share the hope with others so that they too might rejoice in the eternal hope that you have given to us they may share it, they may have it for themselves. In your name we pray, amen, amen.